Hi, welcome back. This time I was going to talk to you a little bit about my observatory. I've wanted an observatory for many years and if you remember the first episode in my channel I talked about how I got equipment and I felt I wasn't using it enough so before upgrading my equipment I thought the best thing to do was to get an observatory and use the equipment that I already had a lot more. So the story went along the lines of setting up on a Friday evening and after a couple of hours it would cloud over or I'd decide not to set up and then after a few hours it would be clear and either way I just used an awful lot of time. So I decided that I was going to get an observatory. Before I went out and bought my observatory I did my homework. I was at a star party in the Isle of Wight and they had a lot of open observatories uh, one afternoon. I just people who'd built observatories and had them in the backyard. So I was very lucky and then I was able to go around in a weekend and see a lot of different types of observatories, both from roll-off and for domes. And for those of you that have not really considered this, then there are basically two types of observatory. There's the roll-off roof, which is what I've got here, which looks a bit like a normal shed with either a flat or a pitched roof. Mine's a pitched roof, as you'll see in a moment, or a dome. And there are advantages and disadvantages of both. The domes take up a much smaller footprint because the roof doesn't need to roll off, it just swings back. And generally people say that they have less problem with condensation. The disadvantage of having a dome is that some of the designs don't allow you to point straight up at the zenith because they're like a shutter that comes back halfway. Uh, others just have a rotating slit and for me I don't like that concept because it restricts the amount of sky that you can see. On the plus side you do get quite good shelter from uh, the weather, particularly from winds when it gets quite cold and if you're in a source of light pollution then you can orientate the dome so that you cut a lot of that light pollution out. The roll-off roof observatory on the other hand is usually well, maybe cheaper to build uh, I find them a bit sturdier. You can combine them with a warm room, so particularly if you're into imaging, you can set your scope going and then you can go into the half of the room that's uh, heated and control your scope remotely. They uh, give you much more space to store equipment. Some of the dome designs do come with pods that bolt on the side, which make it a bit easier to store equipment. Often the domes are of a size where you can only get one person in at once. If you can afford a huge dome, then that's all good. I decided, weighing up the pros and cons, to go for a roll-off roof type. After I decided that I was going to go with a roll-off roof style observatory rather than a dome, I looked on the internet at various companies and looked for designs and there's a couple of good groups on Facebook. I think one of them is Home Observatories, which is quite a useful site, lots of ideas, lots of pictures. But I looked around and I was going to build my own site. And the first thing I did, I was looking for a uh, steel pillar to mount my scope on that was going to go into my observatory. And I found a company up in North Norfolk, actually called Home Observatories. And I got in touch with them about the pillar and we started talking and they gave me a quote for a 10 foot by 7 foot uh, roll-off roof observatory and that came at uh, about £2,800 about four five years ago and it seemed like a bit of a bargain. The problem that I had with building one myself, even though I'm relatively handy, was that it would have been the first observatory that I'd ever built and so when you do things for the first time often you do make some design errors. Whereas the thought these guys have been building them for 15 years, I would profit from the mistakes that they'd made and that they had improved the design over that period of time. So that's what I did. I ordered a prefabricated home observatory built to my specification from home observatories. As you can see from the images, what I really like about this design is A, the pitched roof. So pitched roof is quite, quite nice. And you can see that although it's waterproof and it does have like a waterproof membrane uh, over the top of it, they covered it with shingles, so cedar shingles, and that makes it look a lot better. So aesthetically it's kind of better in my, my, my garden, keeps everybody happy. And the other really good thing that I like is that one side, the rear side, is to the roof height and then the other side is reduced a little bit. And the advantage of that is that it gives you a much better visibility of the sky while still keeping the wind off. The other thing that everyone has to consider is whereabouts in your garden is the best point to put your observatory. So you need to kind of consider which way the stars are going to swing above, where your sources of light pollution are, are there any big trees around, uh, any light sources, and if you're going to get power into your observatory, how are you going to run power in? 
and what I did was I got my scope set up on its tripod and I moved it around the garden for several weeks observing every night and moving it around and I was going to put it right down at the bottom of the garden but actually I ended up putting it to the boundary quite close into the house because that was where I got the best view of the sky particularly down to the uh, western horizon. So I ordered my observatory and at the time we were doing some renovations on our house so I had builders in already and I got them to come and cast the foundations. So I got about a cubic metre of concrete cast in the centre of where my observatory was going to go. I got them to form an insulation joint around the outside using like a, the, the kind of thing that use expansion joints in brickwork. So that isolates the scope and the pillar from any vibrations that you might create while you're walking around. And then I got them to uh, cast the concrete slab around it, ready for home observatories coming in to build it. Uh, a couple of other things that I did was I got them to run some conduits up into the centre of the uh, pier to improve my cabling and I wanted two conduits. I wanted one coming in from the outside that was going to provide internet and then I wanted one that was going back over to the wall so I could route cables underground and not have to worry about rolling over the floor. Unfortunately the builders didn't quite follow my instructions they didn't power float the floor, they just uh, tamped it down which didn't give it the, the, the best finish because they thought they were just putting a shed up and they missed out one of the conduits and by the time I got home from work and found the concrete had gone off it was uh, too late, I was stuck with what I had. So people ask how well does the roll off roof work and how easy is it to push it off? Well I find it remarkably easy, I can push it off with one hand, as you can see there are V-shaped roller tracks that run down both sides of the observatory and then there are some steel wheels which run over the top, so a lot of people use nylon, uh, these are actually, they look like a uh, some sort of a, a coppery bronzy alloy, uh, certainly don't rust and they work really well. The V-shaped channel is galvanised and it's very easy to roll on and off. I think it works supremely well, it's very easy, it's very light. I know that some people motorise the roof, I didn't really feel the need to do that, that's something that I may do in the future. And another project that I will report on soon is my construction of a weather station and certainly that can be linked into ASCOM in the telescope control system to open and close the observatory roof and I know a lot of people that do power their uh, roll-off roofs. The other thing to think about is power and intranet when you're putting up your scope. So I got the builder to run cabling out into the observatory. So I've got hardwired internet coming in here from my internet in the house. And then I've got a TP-Link uh, wireless router on the wall here. So I've actually got really good Wi-Fi both here in the observatory and actually out through the rest of my garden. So that works really well. I think if I'd been doing it now, I probably would have gone for a meshed Wi-Fi system, but at the time I didn't do that, so that would be an improvement that I would probably uh, make in the near future. In terms of the power, I use these waterproof uh, sockets, so everything runs back to an earth leakage uh, circuit breaker. There's one on the main board in the house, I've got another one here in the observatory, and then I've got these big uh, paddle switches on the wall that I use to power the light. So I've got a bulkhead light either end with a red light in it so that I can use that if I need a bit of extra light when I'm working on the scope. I also have a fluorescent tube that I've got up in the roof which I just plug in if I'm doing some maintenance on the scope and it's a wet day I can keep the roof on and I've got enough light to see what I'm doing. A lot of people consider having warm rooms so I thought about it but I decided that I didn't need a warm room because I've got the internet running in here. If it's a bit cold then I can just go into the house and I can control my scope from my study. If you can't run cables with the internet into your observatory, the other thing that you could try doing is putting the internet over your power system. So that uses some other frequency in the cable and uh, I've heard many people do that and it works extremely well. I don't know what sort of bandwidth reduction you get but all the reports I've had have been very positive. One of the disadvantages of a roll-off roof observatory is that it can get a bit damp and I've heard that the dome observatories are much better in that, that respect. However, what I've done is I've got a dehumidifier in my observatory. You can see it's here uh, behind me on the wall 
and I've got that uh, piped outside so it's on a switch and when it detects that the humidity reaches a particular trip point then it cuts in and that seems to work extremely well and I've not had any damp or humidity problems uh, in here. It's also got the advantages that it does give out a bit of heat so after a very cold night imaging I can close up the observatory, switch it on and even though everything's covered in frost, within a couple of hours, everything's dried off and warmed up and uh, keeps it in really good condition. The other thing that you might want to note is the flooring that I've used down here. So I mentioned I had a couple of problems with the builder not putting in a floated, a steel floated finish. So what I did was I used this uh, foam checker plate uh, type material. So you can buy these off eBay fairly uh, cheaply. So it's these type of uh, tiles, I think they're about uh, 450 wide. They come with a tessellated edge, as you can see here. And uh, that enables you to lay them down, they interlock and it works really well. So again, it's another thing that uh, makes it a bit more pleasant to walk on the floor. And if you're at the scope and you dropped an eyepiece, there's probably a lower probability of you damaging it. Certainly had an accident with my camera one night and it dropped off and uh, I got away with it, it, it wasn't damaged. What I liked about the observatory that I got was some of the nice detailing. So if you look at the video here, you can see how when it rolls off, the guttering and the downpipes connect when the roof is closed, and then that uh, cascades the water out onto the flower beds in the garden. So I thought that was quite a, a, a nice touch. What I like about this observatory design, apart from the one wall being higher than the other, so the front wall is much lower, is that it closes up quite nicely. You can see the brushes that come in over the joint to keep it uh, relative, keeps a lot of the damp out, but it also gives you a bit of uh, ventilation through, so it's not good for everything to be in a sealed box. It's kind of much better to get ventilation through. That also helps with the humidity. A lot of the other observatories that I looked at of the roll-off roof type needed straps to hold the roof in place. I think the sheer weight of my roof means that it's not going to flip off, so it's very secure. It's also very heavy. When it's closed, there's just one bolt that goes home. The other advantage of having a roll-off roof observatory is that it looks less like a shed full of expensive equipment, whereas most people would recognise an observatory dome. I would instantly think there could be expensive cameras and telescopes and other equipment and laptops inside that could be stolen. Whereas if you have a roll-off roof observatory, it's far more innocuous. And even though mine is well hidden away in the garden, I think it's nice to have it hidden from view. But notwithstanding, I've also got a very heavy rock lock and padlock on the door and there's no way anyone could push the roof off once the bolt's in its home position. So I hope that you've enjoyed this little tour of my observatory and some of the things that I learned during its construction. I'll be back soon with another topic to discuss with you. If you've enjoyed this, then please consider a like and subscribing to my channel. See you soon. Clear skies.